Hey everybody, Jesse Reed here with Dropout Entertainment. I'm here with Matthew Tyler DeLeo. How's your day going so far, Matthew? It is going awesome. Uh, any day where I'm not congested is a good day. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, you, you were just getting over a, a little bit of a cold, right? So uh, yeah, feel, feeling better today? Back back to full function, or how are you doing? Uh, I'm still recovering, but like for me, it's a good thing that I got sick before the upcoming show, because like... There's nothing worse, nothing more stressful where the day of and you're like, oh, no, <laughs> what do I do? Definitely, definitely. It's something out of your control at that point. Um, yeah. And you guys got a big show coming up. Uh, this is the yep. first show after uh, after the relaunch. Yes. Um, yeah. Can we uh, can we talk? Actually, you know, what? let's talk about the relaunch of, of the band first, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. So uh, my band originally was called uh, WCS, which stood for Worst Case Scenario. It was a band that started originally in January 2019 uh, between me and uh, Paul J. Doran. Um, both of our bands were breaking up. I was in a band called City and Wires. He was in a band called Earth Phonics. And uh, we met at the Rock Pile in the middle of a, a show. And um, we just kind of hit it off. And when my band broke up, he reached out to me saying, hey, um, your band is breaking up. My band is going into a bit of a lull. Do you want to start something? And I looked at him and I'm like, well, you know, why the hell not? Because I tried auditioning for other groups and it just wasn't really fitting in. Um, so I'm like, well, I'll give this guy a shot. And if it works out, cool. If not, I don't know, maybe I'll just walk out of the music scene and go back to doing what I'm doing. And I brought him over. And within like about 15, 20 minutes, we were writing our first songs. And I was just sort of looking at him going, I can work with this guy. <laughs> okay, this is interesting. Let's get started. Um, the name WCS Worst Case Scenario stemmed from a conversation I was having with uh, my roommate, Kathy, at the time. Because uh, it was just me and Paul. We didn't have a drummer. We didn't have a bassist. And I turned to her and said, well, worst case scenario, we'll just be an acoustic duo. And she looked at me and said, that's your band's name. And I'm like, I'm sorry? What? Yeah, that's that's what you're going to call yourselves. Okay. And so I went out and I started knocking on doors and I found um, uh, Mikey Baranov, who was the original bassist in Earth Phonics with Paul, who wanted to play with us. And then Mario Cabral, who was a recommendation from Frank Ofori, who did play in Earth Phonics. He said, hey, I know this guy called Mario. You want to bring him out? And we created uh, the group from that point on. Um, we had a lot of ups and downs. Uh, we were working on our own original songs. We created our first music video, Show Me the Light, um, on March, I want to say, 2020. And like within a week after filming the music video for that, all of Toronto shut down because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. So we had gone from like filming our first music video to, okay, well now we can't get any shows done. What do we do? Um, and Paul and I, you know, basically got together at his place and we started writing songs left, right, and center. We wrote some really, truly amazing things. And then when things started finally opening up, I'm like, all right, cool. We got to hit as many venues as we possibly can in order to make up for that lost time. Um, so I was booking like shows left, right, and center from, um, you know, going into Hamilton, we were doing like uh, the Kill Room. We were doing um, uh, a Corktown pub. We went into Oshawa. We were starting to play the Atria. Um, we were like slowly starting to, to build ourselves up, but we were also burning ourselves out because we were doing so many shows. And the shows that we were doing, um, we weren't getting returns on the people that were coming in, right? So we were... You know, we were playing these shows, but we'd be lucky if we had like maybe 20, 25 people in attendance. And we we're just like, well, we can't really grow with that. And so during the summer of 2023, we started looking at it going, let's build an EP. Um, let's put our best songs together. Um, we'll, we'll hash out which songs go on the EP and uh, we'll go from there. So after recording all the drum parts, all the vocal parts, we had the EP fully recorded. And that's when uh, Mario said that he wanted out of the band. And when Mario left, um, Mikey left. And when we lost that sort of rhythm section, um, Paul said, all right, I'm, I guess this is it. And I was just sitting there going, but we just finished recording our EP. 
We just finished doing all the work. The only thing that needs to happen is I need to get album artwork out and I need to put it out to all these other people. And he's like, well, you know, you can do whatever you want with this. You know, these are your songs. Go and do it. Right? So the band fell apart and I spent probably the, the better portion of maybe I want to say four to five months um, basically trying to save up what little money I could. Uh, I tracked down a local Hamilton artist, Anthony Haley, um, who did an amazing job doing um, the EP cover. I told him, you know, basically what it was about and how all the songs sort of flowed into the, the hopelessness of the COVID-19 pandemic. And his very first take, he knocked it out of the park with like minor revisions. Um, and I put that out in April of um, 2023. And so... At that point, the band was done. I was frustrated. I had no money uh, to the point where I was on the verge of um, moving either back in with my parents or couch crashing. Um, and I was just sort of frustrated at how the band went. And I'm like, it can't, it shouldn't have ended like this. There should have been more than what was going down. Paul J. Doran, um, you know, the, the guitarist of WCS, he also plays in a band called... Um, uh, oh my god, I've forgotten their name right now. Um, Concepts of Light. They're now known as Concepts with a K. Um, and their their front man, who's also, his name is Paul, his name's Paul Meany, said, hey, you need to hash this out with Paul J. Doran. Um, how about you come over to our show, we're playing Junction uh, City Music Hall, now known the no, as the Junction Underground. Uh, you can film our performance, but like, get there early, talk with Paul, see how things are going. So I showed up, I had a heart to heart. Um, I explained to Paul J. Doran about how, you know, upset I was over how WCS folded and um, that I didn't feel that it was right. And I was trying to get closure, right? I was trying to, you know, at least have a, a way for me to, to walk away. And then, you know, Paul looked at me and he's like, so you want to start again? And I'm like, the hell do you mean start again? And he's like, I don't know, just look for a drummer, look for a bassist, get in contact with me. And I'm sort of looking at myself, you know, finally I've got a job at this point, so I no longer have to worry about being homeless, but I basically have my head in my hands going, okay, I'll give this a shot. I'll see where we go. We recruited um, our guitar, uh, sorry, our bassist, uh, Nikki Ace, who used to play in a, a band called Joe Funk. And uh, he's like, we auditioned him and another drummer and that drummer was atrocious. Um, and he looked at me and he's like, Hey, I want to be part of your group. The music that you make is really good. Like really, really, really good. But I don't know what your deal is with this drummer, but I am not playing with him. And I'm like, no, no, no. He was an audition just like you. And he's like, Oh, thank Christ. <laughs> um, and I looked at him and I'm like, I don't know any drummers. Do you have any recommendations? And he's like, actually, and he reaches out to um, Dylan uh, Benito, who plays with him and Joe Funk. And he said, yeah, let's let's give this a shot. And so I've now got a, a full lineup. And these guys are really solid musicians. And now it comes to the point of, okay, we're back here. We're back on the scene. It's the, the second version of Worst Case Scenario. And then I'm like, we need to change our name. And Paul's like, but I like worst case scenario. And I'm like, yes, you like worst case scenario, but uh, Mario is no longer in the group. And um, uh, uh, Mikey is no longer in the group. It doesn't make sense to continue on as that name. And then I also looked on Spotify. I typed in worst case scenario and I showed them all the other bands that are called worst case scenario. Yeah. And then I went in and I typed in WCS and then I showed them all the other profiles that said WCS. And I'm like, if you want this to work, we have to change our name because this is not going to fly. We need to have something unique, something creative. And um, I looked at him and I'm like, go come up with a bunch of different band names. Get back to me. And they sent me some stuff in. I was looking at them and I'm like, like some of them were all right, but some of them weren't matching the sound. They would have been good if we were like a metal band. Or it would have been good if we were like a um, very unique kind of band like Primus. 
but like I was looking at it going that that doesn't sound like something that would work well with our sound. I was invited to uh, a show to see Culture Club. Uh, Boy George was performing. Uh, Berlin was opening. Um, and I was listening to the music and Boy George has like really fashiony people that go to the show, like really odd fashion stuff. And five to six rows down, there's this blonde haired girl who's wearing like a neon blue camouflage blue jacket blue pants sort of situation and she's got like a, a neon yellow belt it almost makes it look like a karate gi and i'm looking at her and i'm like i'm sitting next to, to my aunt sue and i'm like it's almost like that girl is wearing some kind of like camouflage kimono and i'm just sitting there going camouflage kimono camo kimono oh that's the band's name <laughs> i gotta write that down so i pulled up my phone typed it down and then like 15 seconds later, my phone died because it had no battery left. And I'm like, okay, we are now known as this. And the guys were like, really? And I'm like, it's better than what we got currently. And they're like, yeah, that is true. All right, cool. We're camo kimono. Let's go. And so that's, that's how we got the band name. That's how I found the members and how we've sort of got to this point, at least. Hopefully I told you as much as I could. Sorry if I rambled, but. Oh, no, that's that's awesome. That's that's a good background. I feel like we got the full story here. And uh, yeah, so now now that you guys uh, now that you have relaunched this, you got your first show coming up with the new name yep. at Horseshoe Tavern. Uh, that's alongside the Scary Loud and Central. Um, yes. Yeah. What what can you tell us about the show? What can fans expect? So this show that we have going in, like this, is a year long absence for for us. Um, everyone else is a little bit different when it comes to music, but where I get my enjoyment is through being able to perform. So like I am pent up and ready to explode onto that stage. The moment, you know, we are good to go. Um, we're going to be playing pretty much most of the songs from our EP um, that, that came out as well as our previous singles, show me the light tears in the rain, melancholy. Um, but for, for us, you know, I'm pretty much looking at it going, okay, I'm going to try to be as physical as I possibly can, you know, jump around the stage, get the audience involved um, but I will try to tone it back uh, a little bit because I was looking back at our previous stuff and there are times where, you know, the band is ready to go, but I'm doing crowd work and I'm like, OK, I need this isn't stand up comedy right now. This is a, a group project. This is not the Matthew Tyler DeLeo show. Um, but, yeah, there, there will be a lot of physicality to it. Um, I try my best to sort of like turn it into a theatrical performance and see where the crowd is going and see what I can do to, to bring out uh, the rest of the band. Um, Nikki is also, uh, Nikki, our bassist, uh, he, like, when I filmed him a couple times, like, he absolutely loves being the spotlight. Paul goes nuts. Um, this is a, a really good lineup. What they're going to bring out of it, I do not know. But it is going to be a, a really sort of fun experience. And this show, like all the bands that we are playing on this card, um, are all bands that I have worked with before in the past. Um, like, for example, The Scary Loud, we gave them uh, their very first show when we did The, the Piston, I want to say in like uh, 2022. I think it was like in July or June, we, we invited them on and that was their first gig. Um, Central... Uh, we haven't played with them before, but their lead singer, Adam Gamori, used to be my bass player when um, I was in Searching for Kim, uh, which was my very first band uh, running around the Toronto music scene. So being able to reconnect with Adam and to see his band and to, to see how he has uh, been, as well as this show, uh, which is in February, um, it is kind of as well the 10-year anniversary of searching for Kim's very first show at the Horseshoe Tavern as well. So like having Adam on the card and being able to play with him uh, as well is sort of like a very interesting throwback that was not expected. Um, but once again, is it's an amazing feeling just to be able to come back. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's, I'm sure it's something you've missed. Uh, and it's, it's, you know, such, such a unique time being up on a stage. Can you, uh, do you want to talk a little bit just about, you know, that feeling and that energy of being up on a stage. So it's for me, once again, it's it's 
I, I kind of start in the, the middle of the day, like, um, I have my own sort of building of anxiety that kind of goes up. Um, so right before the show, I want to say like hours before the show, I kind of get my own headspace and I'm like, okay, we're going to do this. I don't know how exactly this is going to go down, but I know the order and we're going to sort of deal with this as we go along. And as we start getting to the venue, it starts building that anxiety starts going and going and going and going and going. And then we get to the venue and I start seeing the people uh, file in. And as I'm watching them, you know, I, I try to, to talk to them, but it's not calming me down. It's building me up. So the moment we get on stage and I'm looking out at all these people, I'm like, okay, look at your guitarist. I give him the thumbs up. I'm like, are you good to go? He gives me that. I look to the drums. I say, are you good to go? I look to bass. You good to go? I do that with all three of them. And I'm like, okay, let's start it. I introduce the the band. And at that moment, the adrenaline kicks in. And I just go nuts. Um, depending on the stage, sometimes, you know, I jump around. I jump off of things. Um, I, I pretty much act kind of insane. Like uh, we did the Kill Room. I don't know if you've ever been to the Kill Room, but it's like an indoor skate park. And when we were ready to go, I'm like, okay, we're playing right against a quarter pipe. Um, what? How, I got to make use of this quarter pipe. What am I going to do? So in between parts where I'm not singing, I would run up and basically like run up, jump, and try to go from one end of the quarter pipe to the other. And just like doing that throughout the entirety of the show. And, um, you know, sometimes... I'm, uh, like, I remember looking at that footage. I remember uh, my photographer, Alex Rose, who looked at me afterwards going, there were so many times where we were sitting there going, you are going to trip and fall and die during that show. <laughs> like, we're just expecting you to complete and total. Am I allowed to swear during this? Yeah, show? yeah. Yeah, there were times where we were just expecting you completely to eat shit. Um, but you, you somehow managed to pull it off. But, like, the thing is about that energy is that I build it up. It goes uh, the rest of the way through so long as I don't have anything that interrupts that train of thought. Like if we have a technical issue, all the energy that I have will dissipate and go from that because I'll be sitting there going, okay, well, for example, at the kill room, um, the drum kit that we had, Mario hit the kick drum and it's not his fault, but he hit the kick drum and it punctured a hole through the drum. And we had to basically wait for like 10 minutes while they get uh, electrical tape and sort of do that. And when we came back, all that energy from me that I had built up throughout the entirety of that show was gone. Um, but, you know, it's it's pretty much like I'm riding uh, a high. I'm riding this giant sort of adrenaline wave. And then when it is done, when, you know, we're done for the night, I'm exhausted. I'm covered in sweat. Um, there've been a couple times where I've just hit the floor and I'm like, okay, I'm going to stay here for a few minutes. I'm fine. Just let me get oxygen back into my lungs and I'll pull myself up and, and continue going on. Um, there are a lot of reasons why people get into music. For me, it has always been about the live show. Um, it has always been about being able to perform and to showcase, uh, my music, to showcase my art, to, um, all these people and have that sort of human interaction that I wouldn't normally get just making stuff at home in the studio and putting that online. Awesome. And that's what I get out of it. Nice. Nice. Yeah, no, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I love that you ran us all the way through that. Cause you're right. There's so many ups and downs and, uh, mm -hmm. momentum, such an important thing as well. Mm. Um, yeah. So, uh, for you guys' music, you, you're mixing together, uh, rock, J rock, Brit pop and alternative. Uh, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about where those influences come from and how uh, how you ended up mending them all together? So we are all sort of like products of the outside influences that we have. Um, Paul, once again, he was he's a really good person to work with in the sense of he n kind of knew what my vibe was going in. Um, when I was a lot of the music that I would listen to, like I would listen to like southern california uh ska punk rap rock groups like uh, zebrahead chronic future um real big fish goldfinger and then i like 90s bands like oasis blur radiohead pulp 
um, and Japanese bands because, like, um, I don't know if you're familiar, they had uh, New Music from Tokyo, uh, which they would bring in and do a cross Canada tour. And I was exposed to bands like Toru no Korami, uh, Jizue, and um, like, uh, I think his name was uh, Pen Plus or whatever. Um, Rio from that band was great, but I was exposed to all these different sort of genres, and I'm like, I want to be able to expand my music to make all these different kinds of music genres and work well into it. Um, one of the things that I've noticed when it comes to working with Paul is he'll work on a guitar lick or something, and I'll listen to it, and I'll be like, okay, I need to find what the melody is. I need to make this song with him. It doesn't matter what genre it is. You know, um, for example, on the EP, we have Rise Up, which is like a – Rage Against the Machine, rap rock kind of song. And then three songs earlier, we've got Broken, which is like, you know, uh, a, a melancholic ballad, um, which is very akin to sort of like 90s music. So we're all trying to pull together our different influences. And at the same time as when Paul starts playing something or when I'm presented with a piece of music, I'll look at it and go, OK, I don't care what genre we did with the last song we're going to have to make this. This is this is the thing. You either survive or you die. If everyone else is making this song, it's up to you to jump with them and to keep going and to maintain that momentum. Nice. Nice. Cool. Uh, yeah, while we're uh, on the topic of uh, writing music, you guys, uh, you got anything new coming up for 2024? Or what's, uh, yeah, what, what's the plan for the rest of the year here? So with 2024, um, the thing is, is that I am always ready to be writing new music. Uh, I think Paul is taking uh, some much needed rest and relaxation. There have been a couple times where I have sat down with him and he starts playing a riff and I'll look at him and I'm like, we can turn that into a song if you want. Like, that is a good riff. We just have to build towards it. And he's like, yeah, uh, I'm definitely feeling that. But right now, um, the only thing that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to like build us back together um, and try to start getting the ball rolling. Because you know, before the band broke up, we had 28 songs that were already good to go. Um, and I think Paul right now wants to focus on uh, a lot more uh, important things. Um, for example, he's going to be a dad soon. Um, so he's looking forward to the birth of his first child, and I think... He's kind of just relaxed right now, um, and I feel that when uh, his son and or daughter uh, is born into the world, uh, we'll be able to continue and get the ball rolling. Um, but for the time being, the only thing that I'm focused on right now is being able to book us shows and uh, rise above the incredible amount of gatekeeping that is in uh, both the Toronto music and the Mississauga music scene. Um like uh, we, we both mentioned, we started out uh, talking about how we, we live in Mississauga. Um, WCS, worst case scenario, was formed in Mississauga. Um, we got our opening starts doing open mics at, um, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but there were like, we went to Coolahans, which is up in Streetsville, and then there's this church that's in Port Credit, which was uh, run by the, the Mississauga Arts Council. But like, we have yet to actually do a full-on concert in the city of Mississauga, despite the fact that the Mississauga Arts Council is right next to me, despite the fact that the rec center is like five to ten minute walk from my apartment. Um, and that major hurdle, once again, is boils down to, you know, we are an up-and-coming band, and these venue owners or promoters will look at us and go, well, how, what is your, your hard ticket value? How many people can you bring in? And you look at them and go, well, we can't guarantee you the numbers that you want. You know, you want uh, 150 to, to 280. And I'm like, we can't guarantee you that. And they're like, well, if you can't guarantee us that, then we can't give you the show. And that's kind of where we're stuck. We're a band that is struggling to find our audience. We've got the songs. Um, the bands that we've played with all look at us after our set, wide-eyed, jaws dropped, and they're like, holy shit and i'm like yeah imagine what we would do if we were actually given a prime spot we would probably be able to to do some big up-and-coming shows but once again gatekeeping is a massive problem in the scene 
Um, and I hope that through, you know, being able to start doing more and more shows, we can start inviting bigger bands to play with us. We can use that and sort of, I wouldn't say rest on um, uh, a much bigger band, but like in the sense of a band will look at us, see the potential that we have, give us the opportunity to play with them, and that will open the door to bigger venues and bigger opportunities. Right, right, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's definitely, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a process get, getting kind of to that, to that level. Uh -huh. um yeah do you uh do you have any like uh kind of lessons or anything that you would say you've learned since you started this to now that has helped you as an artist and you know building those steps yeah um the 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 best thing that i can honestly say is once again um well i'll go back in time i got my start in 2009 um we did sort of a, a battle of the bands at sheridan college where we were opening for the stereos the Penske file and a band out of Hamilton called the dirty nail. And, um, after doing that, I was kind of trying to sort of find any way to play a show. And there was a company, uh, a promotional company called supernova. Um, I will have to start saying allegedly at this point on, because from a legal perspective, I do not want to get hit with litigation, but allegedly, Supernova was a pay-to-play uh, promotional company that would allegedly get a bunch of bands together and allegedly um, would kind of basically say, okay, you won, but never really pay up the rewards of the Battle of the Bands. They would kind of sort of say, oh, we'd give you like studio time or we'd give you like cash and, and be able to do all this thing and then allegedly pull the rug out from all these under pe other people. While... Doing those shows would cost me, because once again, you're, you're trying to, to sell tickets. It would cost me like about $200 uh, a night trying to get people who say that they're going to come and then won't end up coming, and that, that is a, a net loss of you. It did sort of open the doors for us in the sense of we were able to play bigger venues such as the Alma Combo, such as uh, the Sound Academy, such as... Um, uh, Oh my God, I forgot the name. The Mod Club, rest in peace. Um, but doing all of those Battle of the Band competitions made me look at other bands in the most toxic way possible. Instead of looking at them as bands that it's like, hey, we're all in this together. We're all trying, sure, we're all trying to get like a slice of the pie. But because of the Battle of the Bands competitions, I would look at them as competition <laughs> rather than an actual like, group that hey if we do shows together we'll be able to raise each other up we'll be able to start you know your fans will become our fans we'll all be able to sort of help each other out um so one of the things i've learned right from the get-go is um uh, uh don't look at other bands as competition uh, another thing that i'm going to say is probably when it comes to promotional companies like if you are doing pretty much all the job that a promotional company is going to do. Like um, there was this one group, I'm going to name them anonymous because I don't want to burn a bridge, but we would get together and it's like, okay, well we're here with two to three other bands. Cool. Well, we'll promote, we'll promote the show. And the only thing they do is they'll put out a poster and then it's up to the band to do all the job of the, the promotional company. If that is what essentially happens, it's like, okay, what probably would have been better is if we saved up our money and booked the venue ourselves, because we do more of a job promoting the show than you ever would. And you are a promotional company. So what the F gives. Um, so there <laughs> is that. Um, another thing that I'm going to say is uh, try your best to, to go see other shows besides your own. If there are bands that you're interested in bands that you want to network with, um, go and see them you don't always have to like you, I'm, I'm trying to pick my words very carefully um i am a fan of neon blue i've seen them at least three times in concert um i've hung out with fred who is their bassist and you know just through kicking it with him one night he's just like hey um i'm having a, a backyard get together you want to come and next thing you know you're schmoozing and you're shaking hands with like his group of friends and all the musicians that are there. 
And so like you have to, to realize that if you just focus on yourself instead of actually like helping grow your network and network with other people, then you're just going to be stuck inside your own little bubble. So you have to sort of do what you can to reach out. Um, another thing that I am going to say, um, cause this is something that, uh, I realize cause I'm trying to get us to do festivals. The main reason why, uh, I jumped into music, so to speak, is I grew up in Burlington. Uh, we have the sound of music festival, which is uh, this giant free three day outdoor music festival. Um, and the whole reason why I'm not retiring is cause I want to play the sound of music festival once in my lifetime. Um, but Festivals in on themselves, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So you need to start getting good at doing, you know, I wouldn't say backroom dealing, but in the sense of doing music industry events, finding out who these promotion people are, shaking hands, kissing babies, getting to know. Because, like, I, I talked with um, this one band, um, they're called Corey Hotline. Um, they, we, we were kind of strangers in the night. We've never done a show together, but we know who we are. Um, and I just looked at them and like, how did you do this festival? How did you do that festival? And it's like, oh, we know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy. So you have to get really good at networking and going above and beyond. And sometimes the best way to do that is seeing other bands' shows and talking with the people that are in the crowd there because you never know who someone is. Awesome. Yeah, no, I think that's all great advice. Um, so much, so much of this industry is about community. And I think, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's kind of wrapping up a, a lot of the points you made. Um, the more, the more we all work together, the better it is for all of us. Yes. 100%. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, uh, I want to thank you so much for taking the time today, Matthew. Um, before we, before we log off here, any, uh, any last words you want to say to anybody watching? Uh, yeah, uh, if you want to get interested, you can find all our music, uh, whether it's SoundCloud, Spotify, Instagram, Facebook, you name it, uh, you can find us under Camo Kimono. Um, Facebook is like Camo Kimono Official. Um, we've got our upcoming show right now, which is currently scheduled for February 20th. I say currently because the venue contacted me two days ago and said, uh, yeah, sorry, um, how about instead of the 20th, would you like to do Saturday the 24th? And I'm like, uh, okay, let me get back to you on that. So we're either going to be performing on February the 20th or we're going to be performing on Saturday, February the 24th. And uh, yeah, if you are interested in supporting local music talent and, you know, put up or shut up, come on and see us. We'd love <laughs> to have you there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, best of luck on the show uh, with whichever date that it lands on. And yeah, thank you again so much for uh, for taking the time to chat with us today. Anytime, Jesse. Let's do this again sometime. <laughs> Sounds great. I want this.